Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. Hot button topic. Uh, the police, D'Anthony. Yep, they're, uh, they're under uh, siege. Uh, well, yeah. Let's defund them. Fuck it. We- We're all living chaz, brother. You know, I the defund police thing got popular because people didn't understand what it meant. Like defund police just means let's move some money out of that budget into somewhere else, which is, you know, there you can you can make you can have a reasonable discussion about the merits of that, probably, right? But then most people when they heard defund the police, like yeah, fuck the police. Well, that's not really what it means first, and it's not like you're firing everybody. It's just yeah. like rearranging the budget to put more money into social programs. Now, what we probably should do is uh, keep the police where they are and stop spending money on bullshit and put that into social programs. But, hey. That'd be great. Why That'd not? be great. But, and who better to talk about that today than Mike the Cop, uh, one of our, our fan faves. Welcome, Mike. I like that new mug. That, so do I. That's from the magazine. Dude, right? it's, uh, this, is, this is where it's at. It replaced my previous favorite mug, and this is, this is the daily go-to now. I love this. Thing. BlackRifleCoffee.com, promo code Drinking Bros yeah. 20 I wonder we'll who. 20% off there. I don't know who No, use code logo. Mike the Cop. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Do you have a code too? Heck yeah. yeah, man. He's had a code for what's two, your, two what's years. What's your code? Now. Mike the cop. <laughs> but is it twenty percent off? That's twenty percent off. Oh great. Yeah. Use one time. Well, one time use. Our, ours, use Mike is, the cop ours is twenty and a half percent off. So <laughs> fuck Mike the cop. <laughs> I gotta talk to somebody about that. I need twenty one percent, man. <laughs> we'll get into a fucking arms race over who's got the highest percentage <laughs> discount. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, boy, Mike, it's it's a strange fucking world out there, and it's it's really strange for police officers in particular during all of this. Um, Nuts. I, I've look, we've we've been following you for years. You've been on the show uh, a few times now. Um, you're you have one of the most sensible voices uh, for police officers in situations like this. Um, let's start from I guess the beginning of this. Uh, what were your thoughts on the George Floyd um, case up in Minneapolis? Oh, so this is where I'm always damned if I do, damned if I don't, because I have zero problem with their use of force in the George Floyd case. Like none, not not even not. There's not a moment of that as far as use of force goes that I thought was a problem. Even the the the, the knee on the neck, um, not. I, I don't think it was an issue and that's a maybe a separate discussion but where i think the issue comes in and i and i would i would for for people that disagree with me what i say is take you and your friend have your friend get high on uh meth and fentanyl and then fight him and and see how that goes and then just let report back (laughs) you know like let me let me know how restraining them goes so the use of force wasn't the issue to me in the george floyd case the race was certainly not an issue that's a completely made up sham but the problem I had with the George Floyd thing and where I did come out against it was uh, the, the point at which they ultimately dehumanized this dude and failed to act when he lost consciousness. There, there comes a point to where they had already called an ambulance, but the problem comes in when they're, they're on top of this guy. And then at some points, the fight is gone. It's over. And their actions continued down that same course, and George Floyd's did it. And that there was a moment in which th- the officers determined they were going down this path and they weren't coming back. And that's that was the problem. And it shouldn't have happened. The officers are wrong, and I and I think that they were complicit in his death. So what you're what, what you're describing for those at home is essentially the use of force continuum, right? So. Yeah. You, you apply the force necessary to deal with the situation, and when they retreat or recede in, in their force, then you back yours down as well, essentially. Mm-hmm. Like if a, guy is, if a guy is holding a fucking stick and you walk up and crack him with a baton and he drops a stick, you can't just keep wailing on him. Right. Uh, although I, gotta, I, I, I need to hear more about this because I can't I, – obviously I'm not a cop, but I've, I've restrained several dozen people in, in combat situations, and we're, we weren't always the nicest to them. But I, I don't think that kneeling on somebody's fucking neck – for eight and a half or so minutes is appropriate behavior. There, there's no way that could be, especially if he's handcuffed, right? Like, there's got to be a better way to do that that doesn't put someone's life at risk. Yeah, in, in your opinion, when should the officer have stopped leaning on his neck or, or putting a knee in his neck? It's hard for me to say because I don't know what it felt like underneath him. I don't know no. if he was continuing to fight because there's people that, want, even when they're in handcuffs, 
they're trying to lift themselves mm -hmm. up are, are, are they, they can you know they're gonna are they trying to bite you are they trying to spit on you there's just not a full enough picture for me and a feeling for me to know exactly what that is i do know from talking to officers uh, from minneapolis as far as the training and the process goes that when they believe someone is in undergoing excited delirium which would be this condition that is is brought on by high levels of adrenaline mm. and resistance mixed with a, a, a substance in your body that uh and then there's positional as asphyxiation there's a lot going on mm. but they they followed a protocol because what we see with the the seven minutes and 53 seconds or eight minutes and whatever whatever the time was what we see there is a culmination of what had already taken place which was pretty much a a, a pretty standard taking into custody they even sit him against the wall. They're trying to talk to him. And then when they put him in the back of the car, uh, he, he then the fight begins. So there's already a fight that has taken place in the back of the squad car. And he's yelling that he's claustrophobic and all this stuff. So they call and they, they call an ambulance. They call for medical care when that's happening. And then the situation ends up on the ground. Well, Minneapolis protocol is that when when officers believe that someone is undergoing that circumstance, they are to position themselves and keep that person from moving to create greater harm for themselves. So that that's what I'm at least familiar enough with to know. I, that, that's the actually, technique. That's a good point, actually, uh, because he's in their custody and they have a responsibility to make sure not only does do they not hurt him, but he doesn't hurt himself at that point, right? Because there was the yeah, guy in Baltimore they, that was, they, they, they chained up in the back of that van and drove mm -hmm. him around and he fucking broke his neck or whatever. Obviously, you can't do yeah. shit like that. Right. So you have you have the situation where he was all they already had no no fight started putting him in the back of the car. Everything was going fine, even though part of the call was like, hey, this dude is on something. He's he's sitting on top of a car. We think he's out of his mind, whatever's going on. Well, then he fights. Well, now he's claustrophobic. So what would have happened with those with those cops present there if they would have just closed the door? and let somebody who was screaming that he was deathly afraid and claustrophobic what if he died back there from from the result of all uh, all the agitation or excited mm -hmm. delirium or what was going on then they would have been heartless guys who just left him in the back of the car now they're heartless guys who have him pinned on the ground while they're waiting for an ambulance mm -hmm. so again the, the for me the big issue is once he goes unconscious there's no attempt to render any aid mm -hmm. Now, I can't I can't speak to what the intent of the officers were or what exactly was going through their head. I know one of the guys said, shouldn't we roll him over? Should we turn him on his side? Mm -hmm. yeah, but they're sort of like appealing to the leadership of the of the, the main cop with 17 years experience, uh, which is sort of like normal. Mm -hmm. Newer cops are going to say, hey, they're going to they're going to run that suggestion up. But uh, that is where the problem is. And that's what's indicative. And what everybody doesn't really know is what was really going through these officers' minds when they sit there with an unconscious man underneath them. There, there is no more fight. There is no more need to be on top of them. You should be, does he need CPR? Does he, you know, should you call the ambulance and tell him to step it up? Should you advise what's going on? And that's why I took a stance, you know, publicly that said, the problem for me is that George Floyd was ultimately dehumanized by these officers. And if there was any ability or opportunity to render aid when he needed it they failed to do that which makes them complicit in his death yeah second degree uh, murder i don't know uh, i think i honestly think death, it's no. for when, two days after this happened out just from my knowledge of the state state's laws i was like yeah this is going to be probably a third degree murder charge yeah uh and then when they bumped it up to secondary i'm like nope you there's i in my opinion if they get a jury that is reasonable there's no way they can convict third or second degree murder because you have you have yeah. to prove intent yeah and so that's how, like how the hardest thing to prove to in a court of law intense. i yeah. mean they can prove negligence but that's what third degree murder that's why like most states don't even have third degree murder that's why mm -hmm. it exists in minnesota is to be something that's bad enough for a murder charge uh yep. instead of you know manslaughter but not quite so bad that it had in like a direct intent to kill right that's the whole point of that charge third degree murder that is exactly what they should have charged right I don't know what the fuck they're doing up there. It's put, they're playing politics, I guess. Well, it, the same well, thing. All, I mean, the whole thing was a, uh, an alleged spark for the uh, the conversation on right. race, and, and and it has nothing to do with race. There's there's no evidence of that whatsoever with George Floyd. So I, I don't know. It's it's just a bizarre old world these days where uh, one circumstance creates 
uh, outrage on a completely unrelated issue. <laughs> I don't, you don't, you I don't, don't know. You don't think there's something you're, you're describing your problem with the situation, which is that uh, these guys completely dehumanized uh, George Floyd. You don't, I mean, there's mm-hmm. gotta be some kind of, I'm not saying they're racist at all, but the perception of that from a community that's had a very problematic history with police in America is probably going to lean in that direction. Right. I mean, you understand. Yeah. That. I just, I, I, I understand their perception i think but yeah. i also understand that their perception seem to ignore ignore that when um an, a muslim cop last year shot a white chick in minneapolis right yeah no, there there was no outrage it mm-hmm. was quickly buried in, in in the public eye and it was quickly buried there there was not a single uh, car overturned and not a building burned no molotov cocktails no protesters blocking intersections <laughs> why you know, so I mean, like that's the same community, the same police department, but right. it, it, so it, it it's the certainly media. is worth the conversation. But, but that the, you know, media wise, that story is not going to gain as much traction as something like the the George Floyd thing. Um, also, the video not. the video helped as well um, because you're able to see it um, in your yeah. face yep. uh, for better or worse. Right, in but this it, case it, it's more than just worse. perception in their in their case, in my opinion. Like I'm again, I'm not a police officer or anything, but I can read books and stuff uh black people's <laughs> black people's experience with police officers not necessarily so much in this generation but it was a big problem in the fucking 90s and uh these the parents of the people that grew up in the 90s so the grandparents of the folks that we're talking to and dealing with right now like the the, the normal person that commits crime is is a young male for the most part right we're just assholes uh, well, I'm not young anymore, but <laughs> yeah. young males are fucking, they have a lot of energy, a lot of testosterone, not a lot of guidance a lot of times, so they do stupid shit. I mean, go to any army barracks and you'll see that shit in action. Um, but their grandparents, the people that were big parts and had uh, a big part in raising them, their relationship with the police was Jim Crow laws. And in the 60s, even, like it wasn't that long ago, in the 60s, they would go up to a water fountain and try to drink out of it. And some dude could come up and fucking arrest them for it. Like that's, that stuff still lingers in culture. Right. Right. So it doesn't really matter if the cop was racist and I, and I'll, I'll touch on that because I think that I think the phrase systemic racism is problematic because it, it it's makes hugely it, problematic. it makes it sound like the officer involved is a racist and that's why he did what he did. He did what mm-hmm. he did because he lacks empathy and training and a good moral compass. That's why he did what he did. It has nothing to do with him being racist. You know what I mean? And when you paint it that way, it marginalizes all the other elements that led to that event. You know what I mean? Like you can't solve problems if you're just like, if you pick out one little thing that fits your agenda, hey, let's solve that. But there's all these other issues that are going to continue to happen. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any right. sense to yeah. me. Cause it, it, systemic racism sounds good. Right. That's, so it sounds it's, good, but it's yeah. it's so amalgamous. You, it's there's nothing specific about it. Right. It's like you need to you need to find a, a specific issue and then address the specific issue. And I think it's it's also it has to be done in context too. And that's that's where everyone seems to to think, okay, this we saw this problem in Minneapolis, so this is going to make changes everywhere. And that's the problem. It's like we're, we're almost creating problems where they don't exist as well. It's this other police department in a different part of the country may not be struggling with those same issues of training or mm. or thought process or or even race relationships in their community. This might not be it might not be the issue there that it is there in Minneapolis or somewhere else. You know, pick, pick your poison. But we to say the system is so big and so you know, non-specific that you really never get, get anywhere by just talking about the system. <laughs> you know, no, so it's, it's like, that's, it's intellectual uh, laziness is really what it yes. is because there are issues. I mean, we've, we talk about it on the show, I've gone on a number of rants just about how the black community has been treated. Um, not so much lately, but the effects are still there, but like a trillion dollars in, in, in salary that was never paid to slaves. Right. And the fact that 83% of all rev- our, uh, wealth in this country goes from one generation to the next, that's going to have an effect. Because if we Yeah, don't... I just uh, told somebody yesterday, I was like, I mean, it's obviously like the the releasing of slaves, the, the whole concept of owning and managing other people in that sense is a bad idea, regardless of who's, whose race is involved. But when, when we, uh, as a country, made that decision, we have to be honest about the fact that it was kind of like, 
um, good luck. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you're free, but now what? You know, so like it, yeah. the 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 lingering cultural uh, processes that a, a a people group are going to have through mm-hmm. that. <clears throat> and what's what's going on before to to think that there are no remnants of cultural issues in that would be super naive and i think it exists but i think that a lot of the way forward is going to be forward thinking yeah. not um not trying to change the past um so i think that's where we get hung up sometimes because a lot of a lot of that is a past a past issue and we're trying to i think sometimes solve the problem as though we existed then Right. But we exist now, so we have to come up with solutions that are dealing with present circumstances and realities. Right. I think. Yeah, and just to go back to that, one of the points that I was going to make, and I, this is this is, a, I guess, a question, but it's almost rhetorical. Like, is there any uh, is there any societal factor more directly related to crime other than poverty? Because I don't think there is. I mean, there's there's a number of just psychopaths. Mm-hmm. But they're sure they're, yeah. they're, they don't there's not a whole lot of people like that, because if it was if that was the case, it'd be chaos all the goddamn time. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, but most people that are involved in the crimes that cops deal with on a day to day basis um, are in some sort of poverty for the most most part. And uh, white and black. But yeah, way. it doesn't yeah. matter yeah. either way. Yeah, like, they're go, all, go I think it's all going to be Virginia. motivated by money. Right. Like yeah, <laughs> whether sure. it's greed, because yeah. somebody could have enough and you, you say so now you're the drug, you're the drug lord yeah. instead of the drug slinger and you still want more. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it's it, it's it's all motivated in some level by by profit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, which is, uh, you know, it is what it is. So we can we can say, yeah, that definitely has an effect. And I feel like a lot of uh, a lot of white conservatives have trouble admitting that. And I don't understand why. Like it's you didn't do it. It's fine. Nobody, nobody's like coming after you specifically for this shit. It's just, we're just trying to define the problem in a way that makes sense for everybody. And I, I like what you said about uh, coming at solutions from where we are now and not where we've been, because obviously you can't go f- back. There's no fucking rewriting history. There's no, there's exactly. no, there's no redos here. And uh, yeah. And the, and the solution like, you know, for redlining or other, other undeniable realities of of where where we got here Mm. just just undoing it isn't necessarily the solution just trying to kind of like pour and we've tried that for for generations now just pouring money at a problem (laughs) and just just pouring money into something doesn't solve the underlying cultural roots you know what yeah get it doesn't get at the issue and 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 they're still doing it now yeah they're still doing it now the nfl just donated 250 million dollars um to you know, the instead of doing that, why don't they hire people for two hundred and fifty million dollars? That's what I don't understand. It, why, why doesn't ha- Nike giving a job is better than giving it to some organization yeah. where teach a right. man to you don't fucking know fish. where that money's actually going or who's getting paid or whose salaries? I'm not even worried about that. It's just the concept, like he's saying, of throwing money at stuff. Like if we, if the reparations thing happened, that would not solve a goddamn thing. No, it, it wouldn't it, do it, shit because that money would exist for one generation and then go away. Yes, right. Yeah, but it, but. If you're able to create jobs, yeah, that like, will last uh, a lot longer. Assimilating people not only into a career, not not a job, but a career, but into a pathway because this is the way it works. The first generation shows up in poverty, works their fucking ass off, so hopefully their kids can go to school, go right. to college, right? And then their kids go to college and they become pro- professionals and some not not tradesmen, they become like educated professionals, whatever you want to call it, or skilled laborers or whatever the case is. So that's the path. Mm-hmm. We've we've done it a goddamn million times now. It's, this is nothing new. Like we're not we don't we don't have to rewrite how to bring people out of poverty. We've done it in this country relatively recently. So yeah. why why not do that exact fucking thing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when when the discrimination stopped against uh, Italians and Irish people, uh, we didn't just like give them a bunch of money and say, all right, go fucking. Go be, go be wealthy. No, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we fucking hired people. We hired all the Irish people after we stopped fucking them over. We hired them to be the cops. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And it's like, that That makes sense. With Italians, we open up Olive Gardens all over the nation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> people uh, are Carabas eating delicious is, uh, meals. Excellent. Are you a Carabas guy? Ooh, are you a macaroni grill dude? Oh, I am not a... I, I hate Olive Garden, man. No offense <laughs> to anybody. I, Car- Carabas is where it's at. <laughs> Post Malone is a big uh, Olive Garden fan. I am too, man. I'm, I, lo- I love the the OG. That salad and those endless breadsticks, man, you can stuff them right up my butt. Yeah. Uh, anyways, <laughs> the point of all that is, I like. 
we we absolutely have to clearly define what the issue is and solve it in a way that makes sense that's going to like a lasting solution not like this this dumb shit i guess this we can lead this into uh the dallas thing before we go to atlanta let's go to dallas we're doing a fucking tour of well America right let now. me let me ask one more question about minneapolis and your honest opinion what should happen to these officers and what should the charges have been because it's like dan said that second degree is way too high I, and mm. i hate to go back to your your girl but uh that's how casey anthony got off yeah. that charge was was one step too high and then they couldn't they couldn't get it and now you're fucked because yep. now she's off and that's it um, what should these charges be, in your opinion, as an officer for these officers in Minneapolis? Without knowing exactly how Minneapolis or, or Minnesota law works, some form of like a negligent homicide um, where it was you, your negligence was part of this man's death. Like if, if you wouldn't have been negligent we will never know if he could have lived because you were negligent. So you were you, you were complicit in his death. So that I think is is sort of like part of part of what it is. I don't know. I don't know how I would translate the idea of maybe the guy that was sort of doing his job. Um, I don't know his name. He's he's Asian cop. He's standing there, sort of like facing the camera, mm -hmm. which would be protocol, right? Like you, like hey, there's a crowd forming. I'm gonna yeah. sort of like make sure no one's kind of entering the situation. Should he be held responsible for that uh, on some level? Did he not turn around and say, hey, guys, let's, you know, Come on, pack man. it up. Let's, no, let's the do this. The you know? senior guy is the one fucking doing the action. You don't – like the other – two of the guys were fucking trainees, right? Uh, they were newer. I think they had both – I think two of them had less than two years on, mm. uh, if I'm not mistaken. But, but one of them on the body cam is literally saying, hey, should we do something about this? There's a couple of mentions of, like, should we roll them over to, like – uh, do we need, do we need to keep doing this kind of a thing? So I think that's what's going to save them. But certainly, like from a from a decision maker standpoint on there, that's where I think it should should fall. Um, I don't I don't think it's going to. They they might be able to get second degree if they do it right. There's if an... if they're saying that hey he showed intent the moment this guy lost consciousness and he refused to do anything, he is showing he's proving he intended to do nothing. Right. So I mean. Maybe, that, maybe that it's would a, it that really would depends a, really, on that. That would be a smart approach by the prosecutor, but you know how politicized this thing is. They're going to talk about the fucking knee on the neck the whole time. It's not going to be about at the aftermath at all. Yeah, and they'll and they'll have they'll have use of force experts from the defense come in. And oh, yeah. I mean, it was it, it was it was a policy allowed technique from from the PD. They're not going to be able to fry them on that. They just won't be able to because yeah. if it's a if it was allowed in policy, and he followed it, <laughs> it's like the Minneapolis police department will lose money to, to whoever's going to sue him over that, but it won't be, it won't be able to rise to a criminal offense if that's the case. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, now let's, now let's, well, that's, that's, tour. that's what happened with uh, Eric Garner, right? His death at Pantaleo or whatever the fuck that guy's name is. He just got fired. Yeah. He couldn't be charged with anything because technically it wasn't, he didn't break any rules technically or right? right. Not that yeah. it would rise to the level of a crime. Um, yeah. So Dallas, uh, the way to move forward we're just talking about it but like coming up with actual fucking solutions is something that I'm very interested in because uh, I enjoy this country very much enough that I and, you know, put on a uniform and went and fucking fought on its behalf. So I, I like this country, obviously, and I want it to succeed. So I want to find solutions that work. Um, this proposition that I've seen, what it's from BLM, right? Uh, I, I believe it's from a judge, an activist judge, Clay Jenkins, mm. I think is the is the ultimate presenter to this. And it's supposed to be voted on by city council. And I don't know when it's sort of like I'm getting mixed mixed information on when this would be voted on. But uh, my understanding is that it was activists involved or connected with BLM into Clay Jenkins, who who crafts the language of this thing to be right. presented for city council so let's talk about the th the thing that we're discussing here so he put out or someone on his behalf or maybe he was the writer like you said uh there, there's this uh proposition on new policies for police departments mm -hmm. and i just yeah. want mike to run through a couple of these because i can't say them out <laughs> loud without getting angry <laughs> it's the stupidest <laughs> shit i've ever heard in my fucking life <laughs> it's it's pretty ridiculous. Like one of them, you can't use deadly force if the person has a goddamn knife coming at you. 
Yeah, I just read that. Yeah, uh, what do you knife, sp- screwdriver, whatever. What, what are you supposed Jesus to Christ. do uh, then if somebody's coming at you with a knife or a screwdriver? Fucking take your pants off. Nobody wants to fight a naked person. No, not, just no, take all your clothes off. I mean, it's going to take a while when you're kitted up like that. You're going to have to get your vest off and all. I that don't stuff. know. I don't know what your guys' thoughts are. Mine. I, I'm. This is not. This is fully accurate. I am much more intimidated by a situation where I would be facing a knife than a gun. Well, yeah, that, for sure. That'd be I, me. I know, yeah. I know for an absolute fact that I can outshoot pretty much anybody that's going to get into a gunfight with me is just some retard on the street. They don't know how to shoot or handle that weapon. But a knife is yeah, a knife. Uh, it, Anything can go wrong in a knife fight. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, I can I can zigzag enough to yeah. probably avoid some some schmuck that <laughs> went and, and took a NRA course. Yeah, yeah. But I, uh, you know, somebody with a knife, I can zigzag and they can, you know, crisscross right on top yeah. of me with a with that blade. I, it's it's a. I mean, no the, the first rule of a knife fight is you should expect to get cut. Yeah. Like, there, there's an expectation yep. that you're absolutely going to get injured. That, fuck that shit. No, just shoot that guy. Unless, of course, you know, you're a Krav Maga expert. Then you're pretty Oh, untouched. yeah. Oh, yeah. There's if nothing you make like YouTube videos. There's really Israeli hand-to-hand <laughs> combat, brother, to diffuse the situation. <laughs> get fucked. Uh, what, what are they hoping that you'll do in this sitch? Uh, use a taser? Is that what they, they want you to do instead of uh, shoot the guy? I don't know. They don't really provide an alternative in this. They just say that this is about the use of a firearm. Like uh, it says, like shall not shoot. Officers shall not shoot their firearm. So they don't. They don't provide an alternative per se. They just <laughs> say that you can't shoot. You just them. can't shoot it. So are you are you allowed to still if the suspect, holster up and wear one? If the suspect is running away or attempting to withdraw. Now this is clearly based on what happened in Atlanta, and we showed yesterday. Yeah. Like, I can have my full body turned away from you except for my one arm and maybe peeking back over my shoulder and yeah. fucking lay lead right into your fucking chest. Yeah. Easily. I yep. did it, I did it last mean? night to my son in laser tag. Yeah. Same thing, where it was just like, I'm over <laughs> I'm over the shoulder. Dead serious, where you're like, all right, yeah. cool. It is completely plausible to do that. Um, I don't understand that argument either. And Dan went over it yesterday over getting shot mm. in the back of like, oh, he got shot in the back. He was still turning and firing a taser at the fucking officer. Mm-hmm. Which the DA apparently considers a, a lethal weapon so long as it's not police. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yes. Getting shot by yeah. it, I guess. Uh, well, it, Georgia law considers. See, they way that, the way that they phrase it is less lethal. It's not that it's non-lethal. It's yeah. just less, less lethal. lethal yeah. Right. Yeah. So number four on this list is if a suspect is not armed with a firearm. For example, when a suspect is holding a knife, screwdriver, or blunt object, you can't shoot him. There's, ah. something, there's something called a 21-foot rule, right? <laughs> yeah. If you're within 21 feet of me and you have a weapon that can do either, like, can kill me or uh, cause serious bodily harm, then and you start moving towards me, I can unholster my weapon, point at you, and shoot you in the face. The end, right? Uh, 21 foot rule, because that's, I don't know who came up with this. It's old as shit, but it's like the, it takes about that amount of time right. to run that distance to, run that to, fast, to yeah. pull your weapon out. Yeah. Uh, yep. And if the officer is alone, for example, after a solo foot chase. So if you're alone and the guy pulls out a fucking machine gun, if it's Rambo, for example, R- RIP John Rambo, uh, yeah. if, uh, if it's Rambo and he shows up with an M60 off the side of a fucking uh helicopter and he's just laying down lead you're alone you go hey oh, i'm getting shot can somebody come stand by me so i can shoot this dude please is that what yep. it, 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 it says for example oh. after a solo foot chase you can't <laughs> use your fucking weapon <laughs> if you're alone what the fuck How, come yeah, on to have a buddy you have come to call on. a buddy dude you have to do a buddy, the buddy system yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> find a picture of uh this guy and put it up on the screen Clay Jenkins is his name. Yeah, he, mark he, that time code. He, he looks like uh, fucking Beto, to be honest. Clay Jenkins. Not not real. He's like a he. He just has that weak man look. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, very beta. Yeah. Cuckish. He, he looks. Call it. He's, Cuckish. The, he's the kind of guy that has to fold his dick in half and put it in because he can't get erections. And he, and he likes to watch people bone his wife. That's a that's a cuck. That's very cuckish. Yeah, it, it's weird to me that we have partisan judge uh, elections. That's weird. Like, why would you yeah. why would you be electing? And it's the same thing we discussed here for the school board. School board, yeah. Like, when you run for school board, you have to choose a you party. Choose a what party. the fuck does a political party have to do with being a judge or being on Is, a school isn't board? It, isn't it something? It's I mean, crazy. Jesus Christ. We take every opportunity we can to say, oh, I'm a little bit different than you. I'm going to stand over here now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ, man. So what, what would you say to the people of Dallas who are on the force there? If this, if this were to magically somehow pass all these fucking rules— what would you say to them, and would they just quit? I would hope they would. I hope. I, I'd hope they walk out. I would. I, I would. I would absolutely 
I mean, I'd have no choice. I mean, I could always like go deliver pizzas or something. I'd do something. I'm not, I, I wouldn't do that. You can't, you can't, you can't uh, give the advantage away to, to Criminals. people who now know, who now know this, you know, it's like in Detroit when they, when they changed the, the laws uh, or not the laws, the, the policies in, in Detroit police for uh, chasing vehicles, guess how often they run away. It's like a lot, <laughs> you know, like because it, it, you, you can't stop them. They know that you can't come after them. So why why stop? You know, like it's it's pointless. It's like when they when they uh, legalized uh, heroin for they well they made uh, immunity here mm -hmm. or if you call the police and say there's an overdose, then you are immune from any of the narcotics in your possession. And so guess what? When a cop is pulling you over and you have heroin in the car, all you got to do is call 911 and say, I think I'm having an overdose. Really? And and they then you're you're immune from prosecution on it. What city is so that? Like, you're in Buffalo? No, Detroit. No, Detroit. I'm in, this is all Michigan. That's a oh, Michigan, this is all Michigan thing. Now. Okay, okay. I've, I have yeah, not heard so, this before. Yeah, it's it's that it, this is this is the nonsense that's everywhere. But I, I would hope that they would just all walk out. I mean, that's what I would hope. I this this won't pass in that form. But I would I would guarantee it's going to pass in some form. There is going to be some language that Dallas PD relents on to satisfy the, the mob mentality and create something that weakens the ability of officers to do their jobs. Man, remember when all those cops in Dallas got killed? Uh, a few yeah, years five ago? cops. Yeah. 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 And then they yep. uh, they used a drone with C4 on it to blow that motherfucker up. Yeah. Which is pretty dope. Uh, and now they want you to have a buddy there to use your. your yeah, no, you have weapon. to. So basically, what they're going to do is they're going to, uh, you're going to hold hands. Mm -hmm. So you got to partner up with a guy that has a different firing hand than you do. So if you're a right handed <laughs> shooter, you got to, because right. you can't, yes. otherwise, you're going to be gonna holding It's going to be hands. like a, uh, a potato sack race where you tie your legs together. <laughs> that way, you can always shoot people. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, I guess you could go with two righties in your face in opposite directions. That way you could hop in a circle and just have 360 degrees. Hook arms. Yeah, yeah. A, little, a little more tactical, yeah. yeah hook sure. arms, absolutely. <laughs> uh, before we get to the Atlanta sitch, uh, you've been on the show numerous times. we got some sponsors pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. Uh, first and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash mm. drinking bros. Um, you know, since you're on the show, the thing about Ghostbed, they've had this deal in place Forever, it was always it's fifteen percent off. If you're a first responder um, or a veteran or, or a veteran, you get uh, fifteen percent off forever in that store yep. at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. They've had that forever, um, so they're not hopping on the bandwagon now. This has been going on for years yeah. and years there, but uh, yeah, and they've not let uh, the cancel culture like they're not Paw Patrol. No, they're no. not. They're not. Re <laughs> they're not reassigning him to a different. They job haven't now. said you get you get a discount if you're a firefighter or a nurse or an EMT, but not a cop. They, yeah. haven't, they haven't canceled it yet. Yeah. Can you imagine that? I mean, I mean, it's we don't want cops sleeping on our beds. Uh, no, not on our beds. Uh, and if you put Chase the cop from Paw Patrol on there, man, <laughs> fuck it. You deserve that bed to be burned. Mm. Um, crazy, crazy. But, of all uh, the things to ban, nah, it's it's going to keep getting worse. Uh, Twenty five percent off everything in the entire store that's mattresses sheets pillows adjustable bases if you order a mattress you get two free pillows for free right now and as always they got a 36 month pay-as-you-go program no interest on that and all of these deals that we discussed are still applicable with the three-year pay-as-you-go program no interest go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today where they have always always supported the first responder community yep. next up we got raycon.com is it? It's by Raycon. Yeah, it's Forest by Raycon. Drinking Bros. Yeah, it is. Best headphones in the biz, kids. <clears throat> I'm a big fan. Yeah, uh, I wish we could wear them on the podcast. We can't. Some people write in. They're like, "Hey, why can't you do?" They that? don't make uh, co like cabled headphones. Correct. They they, they, they stick wireless. to the product that they do best. Yes, uh, which, which is great. Yeah, it is. I mean, they of all the fucking. I, I've said this a million times. We've had them as a sponsor for two goddamn years now, but. Um, I own like 80 different sets of fucking headphones because yeah. one, I'm a serial shopper and two, I listen to music all the time. So I need, I like, I'm always trying different shit to see what works. Yeah. I even got those like over the ear headphones back in the day that like pushed like sonar down your ear canal and mm -hmm. like supposedly came up with a very specific setting for your ears that, that was bullshit no of course that, it was yeah. bullshit but it was worth 300 bucks for me to find it out and then i lost them somewhere <laughs> um but these have the best of any in-ear 
particularly Bluetooth, I've never heard bass this good out of a fucking set of headphones before. No. Like, AirPods can't even compare to this shit. And you, they charge up in a box. They last for six hours now. <clears throat> Go to buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros. That's uh, Raycon, R-A-Y-C-O-N. Buyraycon.com forward slash drinking bros today. Like Ray J, bitch. Yes, and you get uh, 15% off. Knocks them down to like 65 bucks, and they last forever. Come with a bunch of rubber earpieces, too, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you got weird-ass ears. Yeah, dude. There's a lot of people with weird-ass ears weird out Weird-ass ears. Okay, I, I, I'm glad I don't have, like, having big ear canals would be fine. You can always get bigger shit. Yep. But smaller, I mean, shit. No. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You got to get surgery. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Uh, Ray, Ray J should start paying for people's surgery. I'm sure he's paid for some, pla- based on his dating history, he's oh, paid for some easily. plastic surgery before. Yeah. You ever, you ever bought a girl tits by any chance? Mike? Have ever bought what? <laughs> you ever bought a girl tits? <laughs> he zoned out over there. <laughs> like, well, no, I, I I heard it correctly, but I wanted to make sure that I heard it correctly. Uh, We've no, had a not lot yet. of friends I mean, buy tits I, I on this show. Not not yet. Not yet. Okay. If hey, if you play your cards right, maybe you will someday. Uh, last <laughs> but not least, um, we've got liquidiv.com I'm drinking that shit I, I'm, I am too I'm up, it's right it's right here no I'm up, lie, I'm up to two bottle. a day so I drink uh, in the morning I drink the lemon lime mm-hmm. version uh, which I'm considering I'm the Asahi berry guy uh, uh, I'm, myself. I'm, I'm what cons- is this what is this liquid IV speak so of? liquid IV uses cellular transport technology do you understand Mike uh, <laughs> oh, of course I do. Yeah, that, was, that was my that was my minor. In, uh, <laughs> no, so basically, it, it works a lot like uh, you know those. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but you can take pills that isolate sugar in your bloodstream, and they it clumps onto it, so your body doesn't actually process the sugar. Are you familiar with that? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've heard of it. Ray, yeah, Ray Care, Ray Cash Care uses that shit. It's kind of the opposite of that, where uh, it it binds to water and then fucking sends it where it's supposed to go. So instead of just pissing everything out, your cells actually absorb the water more. So oh, okay. based on their lab research, which is actually independent, you can find it online, uh, it's like you get three times more hydrated from one 16-ounce glass so, yeah, of water. Yeah, so if you put a pack in one of these, yeah. uh, you, you'll get hydrated uh, about two to three times. If you drink two yeah. to three bottles of water, yeah. this will nuke it out, and you can only drink one. Yeah, so um, it's like— I've been drinking this shit for years at this point. Well, look, people our size, I'm 6'225". Yeah, I'm 6'3", 225. You're fucking 6'3", 225, 225 yeah. so you're, we're, we're supposed to be drinking like 130 to 160 goddamn— uh, whatever ounces, ounces, of, ounces water of water a day. day. Who's got time for that shit? I'm not going to be one of those guys walking around with a gallon jug of water, man. I'm just not doing it. I'm <laughs> sorry. No offense Same. to you fucking workout heads out there. I'm yeah. sure Derek, you juice heads. You fucking juice heads. I'm sure water. Well, it's also required. If you have a gallon of water, you have to have a fanny pack. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so go to liquidiv.com. Use the promo code Drinking Bros for 25% off. Oh, shit. I've literally been drinking this for fucking years. I, I, they were on drinking broettes, and finally I, I hit the guy up. I was like, hey, man, I actually drink this in real life every yeah. fucking day. Um, can you please be a sponsor on the I'd, show? Yeah, I'd, well, they're great dudes, too. But I, I've never uh, I'd never drank it because I don't get hangovers. You, right. You've uh, seen do. me do a lot of drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm always You're, like. You and Jared pop right up. Yeah. Uh, I'll get a hangover here and there. And I, I that's where this started for me back in the day. But for me, that's why I didn't use it before. Because yeah. I don't get hangovers. And then I started, I read this independent study. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, this is legit. So I'm, I'm good with science. I could deal with science. Everybody in my fucking gym drinks this too. And they're like, wow. they're using the promo code. Drinking bros at liquidiv.com. Uh, that'll give you 25% off. Um, I want to get into the Atlanta thing because this is a big one. Um, this yeah. is, this is, uh, <sighs> I, this this was the hardest one to swallow for me, where I was just like, God damn it, man. Um, what are your thoughts and feelings on, on what happened at the Wendy's uh, for this, this Rayshard Brooks case? Uh, it is, man, this is a, it's a game changer. And, and, it, and it could be really interesting if these, if, if these guys get convicted, which I don't know how. I don't know how they could possibly get convicted, but I also would have would have thought that they never would have been charged. Like, yeah, there is literally nothing. I, I've watched the whole video. I just I can't think uh, there was one thing that I thought that they might have done different if I was them. And that was instead of just patting them down and having the conversation about what he had on his person, I would have I would have asked for consent to search the guy right like that's my habit. Like I don't just pat people down. I always ask, 
hey, do you mind if I check inside your pockets, make sure, you know, whatever you have on you, I'm aware of what you have on you, whatever. I always ask for consent, even if it's not a situation where I could just search somebody, I would always ask for that. And that's just a matter of just practice and tactics, yeah. whatever. It's not even a policy. It's not a law issue. It's nothing. It's right. just, and no, and that, that's, a, I, that's, and that's a good just behavior, my opinion. Though. Like that you, you can either take the role of antagonist or be somebody that's trying to just fucking deescalate the situation, which is something that you clearly do all the time. Like you're just, your whole brand of humanizing the badge is all about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's all these, about like, these we're guys, both man, uh, it's, it, this is, it's a, it's a tough situation. I, I don't think they did a thing. I don't think they did one thing wrong. And the uh, outside of in the moment without knowing what that felt like or what the exact sequence of, of contact was, two, two cops should be able to quickly subdue a human that is resisting. That's, that's my personal opinion. And I think so. I think if, if there's something negative at all to say about this to be like man you know what would be really cool is if every police department made people like at least a blue belt level of brazilian jiu-jitsu to be able to work together to get someone secured in the handcuffs quicker that's but, it, but it's hard man i mean shit it is hard because you don't know like, like i watched that video too from all the angles and i even watched that security cam footage from the wendy's before it got burned down r.i.p wendy um, on that one, but she's still uh, alive. Wendy Thomas is still alive. Oh, is she? Yeah. All right. They didn't kill her. No, I didn't know. No, um, every. I didn't she know she was inside. I think maybe it's like a she's Horcrux. Next. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's like a Horcrux from Harry Potter, where parts of her soul and every Wendy's across the country, so a little bit of her dies every time one goes down. <laughs> you think that's true? <laughs> perhaps, perhaps, and that's my sincere hope, actually. Well. Um, but after watching that footage, right, you didn't know when the guy was going to take off, um, and then he swung at right. the officers. Uh, he, yep. he started punching the officers. Then he took the taser, and then he shot yep. the taser at one of the officers. It, it appeared from the video it hit him in the arm maybe um, yeah. at, at some point. He, was, he is bleeding from his elbow, so he might have been actually pronged you know, or something like that because I don't know how else he would have bled, but I don't, I don't know for sure. For sure. those of you who haven't experienced it, uh, the prongs in a taser, which stands for Thomas A. Swift electric rifle, by the way. That's what taser uh, is. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, you know me. Nah, uh, it's fine. Weird I knew shit. it too. So I knew the, it too. The taser prongs are basically like a flat or a straight fish hook. Mm -hmm. So there's a hook on the yes. end of it. And usually when you get shot, even like I've, I've never been shot with the actual hooks before, but I've seen it happen. Uh, when, when we did our training, they just clipped one to our belt and one to our collar. And it's the worst pain I've ever felt in my goddamn life, by the way. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah. if you actually get hit with it, even if you're in training, an EMT has to come pluck that motherfucker out to make sure all the metal comes out. Oh. Like you can't, the cop, if you're, if Mike shoots somebody with a taser on the job, he can't go over there with his fucking uh, multi-tool and rip that fucker out. An EMT's got to do it. Got it. Right? Uh, so it's not fun. But yeah, it would cut. If, if, he, if he got hit with it and then ran away, it would absolutely rip out of his skin and fucking make him bleed. Right? Yeah, so he, he hit the first. Oh, sure. Yeah, he tased the first officer, and then he f it looked like he was firing at the second officer, and that's when he shot him, I believe, twice. Um, was, it, was it twice? He fired yeah, three, three rounds. Three shots were three fired shots. to to hit uh, Brooks. Okay. Hey, that's sixty seven percent right there. It is, and it was like you, you were saying this the other day, Dan. That <clears> um, <throat> you know, uh, most cops don't have a lot of time to go to the shooting range or whatever, and they teach you to shoot center mass. Well, I yeah, well, it, you shoot you uh, no matter who you are, you shoot center mass because the average width of a human torso is nineteen inches, and you're firing a weapon that's about a four minute of angle weapon. I mean, there's a lot of shit that can go wrong right there. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, th th that, that's just the physics part of it. But shooting center mass is it also has to do with the internal organs and making sure you fucking stop that motherfucker. So there's two types of shots. There's a kill shot and there's an incapacitating shot. You could shoot somebody. And they're definitely going to die from that shot, but they can still come after you. And there's an incapacity yep. shot. Like if I, in combat, because a five five six is a pretty small round in a steel core, so it punches right through stuff. Mm -hmm. If I shoot a guy a couple times in the torso, it doesn't go down. I start shooting his hips. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he can't come anywhere anymore after that. Um, but in this case, um, I, back to your point, I, I don't think most police officers have enough firearms training because... You can tell me what your experience is. I know you do on your own time probably more training than most cops get in the line of duty, which is something sure. – Which is, I mean, it's a commitment to the job. I mean, it's not an easy job, and people like you need to be doing it, not people that are just fucking – that think it's cool or whatever. But anyways, um, target discrimination, shit like that. 
man, it's not easy. So when we, we, we would set up targets in a shoot house and it would be a piece of uh, uh, like poster board or something. And it would have different shapes that mm-hmm. have that are painted different colors and they have different numbers on it. You turn around and face the opposite direction. Horn goes off and somebody on the loudspeaker calls out a shape, a number, a color, or whatever combination of that, and you have to find that and shoot it or not shoot if it doesn't exist. That kind of training can help you in these situations, but there's no police officer, unless they're doing it on their own, that are getting that kind of training. And now these motherfuckers want to pull the funding for training. Yeah. So how do we expect the officers to to <laughs> to do better or shoot better <laughs> when you're pulling the funding for it? It sounds so crazy to say out loud. If you're pulling the funding yeah. for all this shit, how do you expect yeah. them to have all of the things you're bitching right. about? Better training, better training. All this. Yes. You're trying to defund well, the police everywhere. I, it's, it's, just, exactly. it's not going it's, to it's make pretty, anything better. It's pretty counter and counterproductive. Yeah, I, I agree. And I would say like too, I, I would give credit where departments do that. Like I had a, I had a really good experience with uh, range officers from a department level. That exact exercise, we, we did that exact um, training exercise with firearms. And w- did we train as often as we probably could? No, but we did do, uh, in indoor shooting mm-hmm. uh, twice a year, outdoor shooting twice a year. So once a quarter, we were getting that in addition to the annual qualification that the state requires, right. which a uh, literal mm-hmm. monkey could pass if he could pull yeah. the trigger. So it's not that that's not that big of a deal. But th- there there was training, uh, and so I think where it does exist, and but a lot of departments don't. A lot of departments just do like some basic qualification, mm-hmm. like <clears throat> you have to basically show there's no dust on that day in your barrel and you know fire a few rounds down down range and, mm. and you're good but where where good training exists i mean it should be obviously commended so yeah for sure and i, I think there uh there's probably some private solution to this um that exists beyond the scope of government where i know there are organizations out there like when i, when I was at black rifle we gave a lot of money to organizations that that uh there were 501c3s that did training for police officers and they did they gave police officers equipment in, in jurisdictions where they couldn't afford it and shit like that. Um, yeah. That stuff there's definitely some kind of solution to that. I think training once a quarter the problem with that is is that your guys operational tempo is fucked. I mean you can't take a whole squad off the line just to go cuz I I say that because I made a reference to my military shit but that's a whole different situation. While my battalion or my brigade is in an, a nine month intensive training cycle. There's three other fucking brigades that are out there fighting. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You can't just pull mm-hmm. a whole team off the line like that. So I'm curious what you think is a solution to that to get the kind of training that's that really is necessary to to make this job. Like, cause you, <clears throat> again, I see you all the time. I don't know how many times a week you're doing it, but you're doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You're doing all your own training and shit like that. Uh, yeah. In addition to the job, but really that should be something that that is institutional and not just you like that. That to yeah. me, to me, what you do is the standard. You know what I mean? But yeah. not only that, but it's costly. Like to yeah. take jujitsu classes and all that stuff. Like not, not just in money, but in time, time well. and money, yeah. dude, where it's like y- you already work a full time job. Now you've got to yep. go outside and do extracurricular activities to improve yourself yep. for the yeah. job that you are doing. And you're not getting paid for that. Um, I yeah. look, my kids in jujitsu, that shit's expensive. Man. Yeah. It's not like, cheap. No, um, yeah. Well, you have to, I think you have to be able to, yeah, well, not, not take away the money to do it. Um, yeah, I, I would agree that reallocating, stop sending cops to frivolous bullshit. Don't, don't like, there should be no response from cops to a parent that calls and says, my seven year old won't get up and go to school. There should, the cops should not be, it, it shouldn't even be a thing. They should be, well, you're going to need to call a counselor, ma'am, or, you know, or call the principal of school. This is not a police matter. Or, um, you know, there's there's just so many countless examples of of frivolous stuff that the police officers are dispatched to where in that situation now it escalates for some other unrelated reason. Mm, right. And the cops probably could have never been there in the first place. No big deal. Right. Um, but the staffing has to be if we have the time by not going to certain calls that that's one option. But there's a University of Michigan, their police department, uh, they have for their campus police. They work, I believe it's 10 hour shifts, but mm. in that 10 hours, you have an hour of health and wellness time Yeah, and like they have a, lift the gym on site yeah. or whatever. So rather than like, what, what would it be like if, a, if police departments had one, a, uh, a defensive tactics coordinator 
that that was their job. And there are some departments like that. There, if uh, there's a guy, uh, I want to say it's Blue Line Jiu Jitsu or something like that. He works for a county. That is his job all day, eight, Monday through Friday, eight hours a day. He's in the gym, and officers are cycled through regularly to do defensive tactics. So it exists. It, we should just take those as examples and figure out how to move them in. So, like, imagine changing instead of working 12 hour shifts now we move to a 10 hour shift scenario or whatever or if out of the 12 one hour of that is training of some kind mm. you just you get to drop the vest you get to mm. drop you know you can you're not answering any calls will it require more staffing to make sure that the call volume is handled sure yeah it will uh but now you're slowly increasing the value of the people that you have on staff have a counselor on staff that every quarter part of you're mandated to go talk to somebody whether you want to or not it's there there's a resource not just an outside contractor that if somebody says i want to go talk to somebody they can but somebody that's there building a just there's there's a whole cultural issue that has to change as far as the mindset of of training and, and equipping and preparedness but everything I, everything you're talking about sorry to interrupt you, you can't do it without money without money <laughs> yeah. you can't do it without exactly. funding so i, I just yep. i don't understand uh, this debate that's going on no, and, that's at nonsense. University of Michigan, uh, I, I didn't know they were doing that, um, and and that's a, a fantastic idea that should be um, a- everywhere. Uh, to, to be honest with you, I yeah. wish their football te- their football team should be using it. They can't beat Ohio State. No, but, they, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, but you can't over. expect you can't expect cops with a family and everything else um, to do to do the idea of oh, on my off days now I'm going to spend half of my off days yep. on training on my own dime. Yeah, it, it, you know, take take the take more time away from my friends, family, life, enjoyment, and then also you got the mindset of like, I need to I need to be in places and around people that I'm not having to think about tactics and yeah. uh, all that stuff. I gotta unwind, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. And if you're if every one of your off days is all about still being sort of like in that zone, your mind just gets you know fucked up, man. Yeah, it's yeah, you're, you're, you're the yeah. wiring is all jacked. That, up. That's that's <laughs> so. where the majority in my opinion, of combat-related post-traumatic stress comes from. It's not necessarily from individual events. It's from prolonged, unmanaged stress, like over the course of months and years, maybe. Uh, I'm curious about um, what you said regarding the some of this, uh, the frivolous calls, as you, you refer to them. Uh, would you be in favor of some kind of like lower-level force, like, people that are on the same level as like parking enforcement that deal with nonsense like that, that we're, we're, ne- we're an armed person. Isn't necessary. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're a social worker or, or something equivalent. Yeah. To that. I don't know. They're going to have to have some training, you know, right. some level of training. And then you're putting, then again, you're putting them in those situations where, yeah, you're going to get, what, what, what if it, what if it escalates? You're well, going to you know? get into and a Zimmerman sitch eventually where something happens that's fucked up and it's not a trained professional. And it is hard to decipher who's calling in that's frivolous and and something something else you know more harmful could be going on at that household or you know party or sure. whatever it yeah, is right so I, that would be a tough one for me to well say i mean none. so homeland security does it that way they have uh they have inspection people and they have agents uh so they have mm-hmm. 1811s and by the way all the 1811s in the government whether you work for the fbi special agent for the fbi atf dea any of them or if it's homeland security you do get time in your daily schedule for physical fitness, right? Every yeah, single day, awesome. every single day you get time for that. So it's, it's worked into that program. I don't see why we can't do that. And to your other point about the decompression and, and just being able to live your life and do the job. There's a reason that Google and Facebook change the game when it comes to how employee employers treat employees. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So they tried to take all the stress out of their life. That wasn't for, because of the job. They want, like, you can stress out about the job, but we don't want you stressing at home, so we'll provide you childcare for mm-hmm. free. We'll have food on site for fucking free, whatever you want. Mm-hmm. We, they bring people in to wash their cars while they're sitting out in the parking lot for free. Right. You know what I mean? All this stuff, why, why aren't we doing this for police officers, people that we put in the most dangerous situations? And it's, it's different than war, because war, you go to war, you come back, shit calms down a little bit. Police officers every single fucking day. Yeah, not every day, but if your mind that's years one uh, years that's years one thing that needs to be changed. I I would I think like because I've been asked this question a bunch of like, well, what would you do if you could just make the changes? You know, in addition to what we've been discussing, I think like cops 
should not. There's very, very slim number of crazy people who are actually built mentally and physically to do 20, 25 years of patrol. Yeah, yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's crazy. So you need to maybe like years tr- from from academy to year five, you're learning the job, you're becoming proficient at it, you're gaining all the knowledge and experience. So you, you go through that. Maybe years five to seven, five to eight, you're a trainer now. Now you're reinvesting what you just learned into those those newer cops. And then you have to transition to something else. Okay, now it's investigations. It's some, mm-hmm. you know, and it doesn't mean that you're never going to be in those situations mm-hmm. ever. It just means that your your day to day exposure to certain things right. is altered mm-hmm. throughout your career. Yep. And then maybe you round out your career on a desk where you're reviewing reports and you're you know on the radio or whatever else. So again, it doesn't guarantee perfect safety, uh, but it, it breaks up the career in a way that you recognize one person probably a normal person shouldn't be on sort of like the the front end the business end of police calls for 15 20 25 no, years. that's insane dude no there's no other no other job on earth where we like there's it's not like that in the mil- there's a, a very small percentage of people in the military that spend their whole career as a shooter very very small like infinitesimal right. even people in line infantry units the only place that you're ever going to see it is people that are fucking tier one and tier two operators. And even in that case, the tier two guys don't always do that. Shit, even the tier one guys don't always do that. They often get reassigned inside the units. So it's like, I, I, that's, a, that's something I've never really thought about. But I do agree uh, with that wholeheartedly. That makes total sense to yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to <laughs> talk about the charges that were levied against uh, these officers in Atlanta. <laughs> uh, they were so extreme that... Um, yeah. Well, the non-shooting officer, what the fuck did he get charged with, and why? I, I, like, I, I know he did, but what the fuck? So they, were, they, they said that he had kicked the kicked the guy when he was dead or down or whatever. They what? said that, yeah, they said that the uh, Rosnan, I think is his name, the secondary, who was actually the first officer on scene. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to that because he was debating, do I want to try to deal with this guy? He, he was trying to gauge how drunk is this guy. Mm, like right. how what how how under the influence is he? Because he's like, hey, can you move your car over here? Which is totally allowable. It's a private property situation. Mm. There's there, there's a lot of shades of legal stuff going on. But hey, like he's trying to kind of give him the benefit of the doubt from the very beginning. Yeah, mm-hmm, for sure. And like, hey, what's are you okay? Hey, can you move your car out of the way? He's yeah. not accusing him instantly of being drunk or anything. He said he's it starts off very slow paced and he yeah. realizes like, I'm going to have to deal with this. I can't let this guy be behind the wheel. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so that's where things happen. So Rolf is the, actually the second guy that shows up and yeah, they said, uh, Brosnan or Rosnan, I, I'm, I'm getting confused, but, um, stepped on his shoulder after he was shot and that Rolf kicked him. Um, but I'm assuming that they're clearing, they're clearing that area not probably trying to kick the taser out of his hand right they're trying to make sure that they are are, is there any other weapons is he is he laying there going to spring back up what's going on they have to secure that scene before before rendering aid they have to i've seen i've seen quite a few people get shot and not ever have i seen somebody just run up and fucking punch somebody after they shoot them i've seen plenty of people try to move weapons away from people Mm -hmm. after they've been shot sure uh although the story from the district attorney was specifically regarding the other officer is that there was no attempt, Brosnan is the name, there was no attempt to uh, to provide aid or whatever the fuck. And then you see yeah. the body cam footage of him literally giving the guy CPR. So I don't know, like this DA <laughs> down in Atlanta is the biggest fuck face on earth. Yeah. Maybe number two right behind the mayor. Yeah, right? like Keisha yeah. Bottoms. Well, did yeah. you, you, you guys saw that the, the GBI – hadn't even completed yeah. this investigation. Yeah. They didn't even know that the, the <laughs> DA was holding this press conference, which was an hour and a half, and it it was like an opening statement. The prosecutor was like trying the case yeah. uh, when announcing In charges. Press. Like it yeah. was it was unbelievable. So he was charged with felony murder. I, yeah. I, F- felony murder is when you're committing a felony and it leads to homicide, right? Is am I, am I right about that? Like, yeah, George. I mean, I, I just uh, I wish I knew how Georgia law worked mm-hmm. com- compared to to Michigan, but it, it's not it, it was it's not like a first degree murder charge. Right. But um, I think it, it would be I think it, you're looking at something that's like equivalent to like a second degree mm. murder. But they're saying the death penalty is is not off the table. 
and this one's <sighs> man. Th- yeah, look, no, it's it's on the table, but yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I mean, it's like they. I want this grand jury to be held in open court because I want to hear. Because in the grand, keep in mind, in the grand people, a lot of people don't know this, but the the barrier for entry of evidence into a grand jury is way lower than it is for an actual trial. Like you can say right. whatever the fuck you want in the grand jury, yeah. right? And it's up to the the panel members to decide if it's going to go to trial or not. I want to hear that because I want to hear what both sides have to say about this. I saw the two attorneys for Brazen on on Cuomo show the other day, and they lit his ass the fuck it picked up. Him apart. He on was CNN he was night, not you know. prepared oh, yeah. for that interview at all. Um, uh, but anyways. I can't imagine the case that they're going to try to make. Like all, all here, here's the way the timeline works for me. So, cop uses a taser. Taser gets called deadly weapon by DA. Uh, guy uses a taser against the cop, gets shot. DA says taser's not a deadly weapon. No. Over the course of what three weeks, two weeks, three weeks? Like yeah, that's yep. the that's the timeline. You play those in succession. Just play those two videos in succession, and the grand jury should get up and walk the fuck out of the room. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, because this is this is the most. If you want shit to fucking change, you can't grab on to this slippery nonsense and make shit up. You have to have a righteous cause, and you have to be very. You have to scrutinize every single person you bring on board, because if they're fucking dragging you down, you got to get rid of them. You know what I mean? You can't take on a cause that's gonna fucking, f- or you can't take on an element that's gonna fuck up your entire cause like that. It doesn't make any goddamn sense to do it. People are are getting very emotional right now, and it's understandable. But if you want change, doesn't happen through emotion. You know what I mean? Martin Luther King wasn't out there screaming and fucking setting shit on fire. He was speaking very directly and, and using facts. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. That that's how you make shit happen. And, and in this, the the biggest fact to me is that that taser is a deadly weapon. So I don't yes. understand how this. I don't even understand how we got charged with anything. To be honest with you, I, 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 it's it's baffling. I mean, I could I could have my opinion that we you have a, a DA that is corrupt. I mean, he is being investigated for both sexual misconduct and misuse of nonprofit funds. Fraud, That's yeah, a reality. Yeah, yeah. But he's he's also <laughs> up for reelection this year. So, uh, what you know, what's going to make him look best among his constituents is it seems to be what's on the forefront of his mind, not the actual facts of the case. Yeah, it's crazy. And then we have breaking news here. The uh, the officer, Garrett Rolf, uh, has just been moved from his prison yeah. um, to, uh, to another facility here. Um, from a cop standpoint, when you go to jail for something like this, um, can they not bail you out? Is that up to the cop themselves to, to find their own bail money? How does that work? Because I saw the guy. He doesn't in Min- have bail, I don't think. Oh, he doesn't have bail. Okay. Because the guy in I Minneapolis. Think, I think the DA didn't. I think he recommended and was approved for no bail. And it was 50000 for Brosnan and, and then yeah. no bail for Rolf. Okay. Because well, the, they, they the guy gave, in Minneapolis gave, got out. He, yeah. he, he made bail, but there was a GoFundMe for it. And I know it got uh-huh. paid real quick and he got out. Um, is that on the cop, or d- does the police department not pick up the tab for cases like this? So it can go either way. You may have a police union that steps in mm-hmm. to try to help. You may mm-hmm. have the, – the department itself uh, can, to some degree, stand up and fight for their officer. Yeah. Um, I, d- I, I don't – man – that's a really good question. I don't think they could post I, I wouldn't, bail. I don't think department. I don't think departments could post bail. No. I think a okay. police union. I think a police union could. Oh yeah, they could. Have, I mean, there's why not? But I don't think. I don't yeah. think official department funds could be used for bail in no. a criminal case. Yeah. I think the other officer, uh, Brosnan, was he? I think he bonded out on his own recog. I think, like they set a fifty thousand dollar bond and just let him sign it and leave. I'm pretty sure that's what happened with him. So he yeah, at least be, yeah. at least he didn't have to put any of his own money down because. Look, it'd be bad if the fucking shooter got charged here, or not charged but convicted. That that would be completely asinine. But if the other guy got fucking charged was or convicted of something, Jesus Christ, dude, we may you guys should just all quit. Yeah, and speaking of that, yeah. it, it, you well, know, I- we we did a show called The Blue Flu where you know half the well the rumor was half the the police didn't show up in Atlanta yeah. for for work that night. Um, is there any possibility that uh, everybody could just band together and just quit? It could, you know, I, so I haven't announced this yet. I actually turned in my stuff yesterday. I'm done. Um, wow. Really? So that, yeah. I, I, and I, I haven't made that public. So you guys are the first, first to hear that publicly. I've got to make a video yet to announce. I'll probably do that this weekend on a broad level on my platform, but yeah, I, I, I'm done. I, I, 
I, I won't stand for it. I'm not going to, there's a lot of reasons behind that, but yeah, I, I don't know that everybody can do that though. You know, I was talking yeah. to so many cops, like I just got five years left, man. Five years is yeah. all I got. I got to make it. I got to make it to the finish line here. I can't, I don't have anything else. This is, this is it. This is what, what I did and I can't, can't get out. And, but I, what we're going to see as, as we go on is more and more good cops will not do it because it's not about their willingness to go put themselves on the line it's, and their families have already agreed that they're okay to support the decision that, Hey, he might not come home. She might not come home, but we do this because it's something we believe in. Like you said, Dan, it was like, I, I love, I love this country. Yeah. I'd like to see it succeed. So they are, they already do that. But what I'm not willing to do, is to go do my job and go to prison and then put my my kids and my grandkids in financial ruin. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. That, no. that. I didn't agree to that. I agreed mm-hmm. to put myself on the line. I didn't agree to put them on the line. So that's that's not happening. And I think you'll see a lot of good cops bail when they can, uh, as soon as they can. And you're going to see the standards fall for hiring even worse than it already is in major urban liberal driven centers. And you're going to it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. And instead of you won't see any videos of anybody being beaten or killed because the cops will be taking money from those same people. They'll be as corrupt as possible. Mm. And we're going to regress back to NYPD of the 1980s. (laughs) It's going to be super corrupt and it's going to be rampant and people will pay the price. Man, I'm I'm genuinely shocked and saddened that that you were quitting Um, because I I think we need more cops like you out there. How how long have you been doing it and and how many years did you have left? Uh, Well, I've been doing 11 years. So when I I started in 2009 and then when I I stopped working full time in 2017 and went part time. So I've been part time for the last three years. Okay. And and now it's just, it's come to the point to where, I mean, that at the heart of it, that's why. I mean, I I think there's still, there still obviously are good cops and there will still be some that stay, stay in for reasons that they have to decide for themselves. I've just been obviously like doing what I've done and growing businesses on the side and um, having, having more than just policing as part of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm just not willing to put all that at risk that, I'm build. I'm trying to build something for my family and, and the generation that comes behind me. And I'm just, I didn't sign up to put that on the line. You know, like you, well, would I be willing to die for, for what I believe in a hundred percent? I've done yeah. it for 11 years and that's, that's a reality, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to put that on my grandkids to, to say like, Oh, grandpa went to prison because he made a decision at work. And now, <laughs> everything that he worked for is gone and we have to start over as a family, you know? Right. Yeah. And there's uh, I can't remember what the quote goes like exactly, but there's some, some quote that says uh, you can tell a lot about a country by how they treat uh, the people that serve their country. You know what I mean? Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's, ta- I think in that case it's talking about veterans, but it's the same way when you uh, like, when I joined the military, I expect to be sent on just causes, Right. Like, if I'm going to put my shit on the line, there's two things I expect. Don't send me into some bullshit that is unnecessary and risk my life unnecessarily and see my friends get killed. And two, if I do get killed, take care of my fucking family. And if I, when I come back and I'm fucked up, take care of me. Help me get back to where I was before. Mm-hmm. That's all I ask. That's a big sacrifice to me. And, um, again, for uh, there's a lot of people that stay in the military for career. I would I would venture to say there are more police officers who do 20 years than there are military people that do 20 years. A bigger percentage of the people that start out in the military leave after one term, I guess, if you want to call it a term, than, than police officers do. They, they typically stay in for a very long time and sacrifice continuously. And that's part of the contract. The newer, the newer generation is at 30 years plus because of the, four, the move to 401ks yeah. versus pensions. So there's a lot of places that you're doing 30 plus years Oof. so you can get a full retirement. Dude, you can't be a fucking patrol cop for 30 fucking years. I don't yeah. care. There's <laughs> no fucking way. There's just no way. Yep. Even trying to stay in shape for 30 years. I mean, Christ, you'd be 50 years old out there in in the streets at that point. Um, what was the reaction yep. from your police chief when you talked to him? Uh, he hasn't talked to me yet. He's not He's not happy. Oh, no. really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, can't I, imagine, I, I, you know. I, I went, I went directly to my sergeant when I made the decision and, and made sure that I handled it and, uh, sent my, sent my formal, my formal letter and all that stuff. And I, I expected to have, to have already had a conversation, uh, with, 
with uh, people above him, but I, I haven't had that yet. So yeah, the, the reason I feel I, I feel good about it at least because I know that I made the right decision. Mm. Yeah, the the reason I ask is, um, you know, I, I guess because I've I've heard about this happening all over the country. If if his response would be, "Hey, man, I completely understand," um, like to be mad about it and not talk to you um, with everything that's going on against the police in the United States right now, I would have to imagine there would be s- s- just one part of him that would be like, hey, man, I understand. I'm and, sure and there is, luck. but he's still in the middle of it. He's still got to keep his squad together. Like, you just got to understand people's perspective. My sergeant major was pissed off when I told him to get fucked when he asked me what it would take to get me to reenlist. Mm-hmm. I told him a billion dollars. <laughs> I mean, like, you get you give me a billion dollars, I'll reenlist. He's like, oh, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, that's That was the plan anyways. Uh but, you know, I, I didn't think uh, he was being a dick or anything. He's just like, I, I get it. it. He's Got trying it. to keep okay. that fucking squad together. Um, yeah, but this conversation, man, it's happening. I, I've, I've, had a, I've had it with a lot of cops over the last week. And, and this situation in Atlanta, it's just like if it can happen there, it can happen here. Yeah. You know, it, and, and there's a lot of cops out there. I just talked to a chief in, in Kentucky. There's there's places in Kentucky, man. They're they're working at eight dollars an hour to start as a cop Yikes. in in poor in poorer areas because you pay by property taxes. You're not. It's yeah. not like there's yeah. this unlimited source of money. There's this. Oh, we should pay cops more. Well, yeah, okay, cool if you can. But I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. it's not like it's not like when you when your average house price is you know fifteen thousand dollars, you're not paying your cops you know 50,000 a year you're paying them eight bucks an hour and uh you think those guys are like seeing this and going man if i if i shoot the wrong person in the wrong circumstance on the wrong video camera my whole life is is not only it's not just my life it's everybody around me is going to have to pay that price you know for uh, for an entire generation at some point it's not worth it no i i completely understand um the last question for you here there's a there was a story out this morning about the nypd uh they are thinking about taking uh, a stand and taking off the 4th of July. Um, I hope they do. And so that everybody can have a real independence day and see what it's yep. like without police. Um, what, what what would it be like if a city like New York uh, and NYPD just said, eh, we're taking off the 4th. I've, I've lived there during uh, the 4th of July and everything. It's fucking crazy. There. Well, technically the crime rate will go down for the day because there will be no arrest made. <laughs> that's true yes, but what, what would it really a, be like? like a perfect example of how statistics can <laughs> yeah. be manipulated yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'd like to see cnn try to use that stat um oh, yeah. what would really happen you think if if nypd just <laughs> record record low crime day. day on fourth of july yeah. uh yeah this is the i real think it America. could go one of two ways it could go like very if 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 they actually did it and people believe that it was happening, it could go really bad and people do that. Or you could have key people lobby for a political advantage to try to quell the the desire for anarchy in that moment to try to prove the point that we don't need the cops. Yeah. So it could go, it could be really interesting. Yeah. Uh, for sure. I, I'd look, I'd love to see it happen just as a case study. You yeah, know, just, would. hey, let's, let's see what would happen. Uh, this is the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week. Uh, which is obviously someone who's inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Mike, who would you like to give the uh, drinking bro of the week to? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, I didn't, I didn't expect to be uh, put on the spot. I will, I'll do this. Uh, I will posthumously award that to my friend, Stephen Williams, mm. who is a cop murdered in Moody, Alabama on June 2nd. <clears throat> and uh, so I, I will, I will give it to him because he deserves every ounce of, uh, of the the honor that we can give him, so rest in peace, Stephen. I'll see him on top of the hill one day. Yeah, you know, I, I've got some. Uh, strangely enough, I've got some friends in Moody, Alabama, and uh, they had actually, really? yeah, and they had actually just wow. text, texted Who are the me. Crawfords. Uh, yes, and um, <clears throat> uh, and, a, and a buddy of mine is a is a lawyer down there, and he had just texted me that guy and be like, hey, if you can, this would be a great drinking bro of the week for next week. Um, uh, it's amazing really? that, that you just did. It. Yeah, yeah, for real. I was just I was down there for the funeral. I was just just down there. Yeah, yeah. Really? yeah him and Daniels are both yeah. down there. No kidding. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, he was he was one of the founding members of uh, Humanizing the Bad. Mm-hmm. He was one of our key writers, and uh, that that dude helped so many cops over the years. At five years of Humanizing the Badge, uh, behind the scenes, on the phone with them, emails, countless conversations. Man, that dude was a he, he was one of a kind is awesome guy yeah my buddy goose uh submitted him actually so uh shout out to goose man 
Um, Mike, thanks for being on the show. I, every time you're on, it's it's one of the best shows we ever have, and we're always grateful to have you on as a guest. Uh, please oh, dang, come back. That's cool. Yeah, please come back. Well, on, I'm gonna. You? I need to launch. I keep saying I've said it for years. I need to start like a, I, I want to start a podcast now more than ever about cop and culture. Yeah. So you guys, you guys have to you have to come on and come on our network. We'll, yeah, we'll you can do, just it. do it. On we have, we have eight shows now. Come on our network, man. We would love oh, to have shoot. you. Yes, yeah. we would love to have you on our network. Let's let's figure it out because I'm gonna be. I, I just ordered some equipment. I'm gonna be up in the game, and we're gonna be gonna be launching it out. Dude, we'll, we'll, we'll chat. It would be fantastic, and yeah. it, especially with everything that's going on now. Because let's face it, this bullshit's gonna continue against cops for you know yeah. the foreseeable future. It's gonna continue until people on both sides step up and fucking get something done instead of putting on goddamn dashikis and kneeling or denying that there's an issue yeah and, like, and we're all we're all wearing fucking blinders right now and everybody's being a pussy <laughs> but to hear it from from somebody who has lived it and is sensible and can give a honest opinion on what is actually happening instead of whatever the media is jamming in your face i think you would be great and i think your show is extremely timely so yeah let's let's do it man i we'd love to have you here uh for mike all right, the we'll, cop, we'll, we'll connect yeah, yeah we'll. for mike the cop d'anthony d'anthony holloway I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>